Video Productions from the Finalgate.com. Hey, Kitty B here. Finalgate.com. Hey, today's lesson is uh, hold fast to your confession. I'm going to go over something today that uh, confuses uh, especially young Christians and even older Christians. It's uh, some verses in Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 19 of chapter 10. And I'm just going to read a few verses here. Then we'll get into the to the discussion or lesson. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He consecrated for us through the veil, that is, His flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Now I'm going to drop down to verse 26, and this is the verse that I wanted to get to. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. What? But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fiery ignitation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment, do you suppose, will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? Whoa! Wow, that's a lot there. I mean, what is that saying? What does it mean to sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of truth? And what does it mean basically to sin in a way that it steps on the Son of God, that you're stepping on the Son of God, or you're, you're kicking the blood of Jesus, you're making a mockery of it. You know, or you're insulting the Spirit of grace. Well, that, that's actually exactly what it's saying. That's the type of sin that it's talking about here. It's a, it's a purpose-driven sin. Let me read down further in verse 35, and then we'll go into, uh, into some other things that will show us and help us understand that, that, uh, that scripture. Verse 35, it says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to destruction, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Wow, there's another scripture. Anyone draws back? What does that mean to draw back? In reference to that verse 26, I mean, that means that you're 
you have a knowledge of Christ, you have a knowledge of the gospel, but for some reason you draw back. You have a, you ever heard somebody say backslid or they, they, they backslid? Some people don't believe you can lose your, your salvation. You know, I tend to disagree with it. I think you can. I mean, if you want to lose your salvation, you can. Because God's given you that free will. Let me explain that a little further. Let's go to the Old Testament. In that, in that verse there, uh, in 28 of uh, Hebrews 10, it says, Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy. Well, well let's look at Moses' law. Let's look at what he was talking about. In, in Numbers chapter 15, starting in verse 27, it says uh, this, ha this law is, uh, it has to do with unintentional sin. Listen to this. If a person sins unintentionally, then he shall bring a female goat in its first year as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for the person who sins unintentionally. So they had to do this yearly for an unintentional sin. They had to give up a goat and then your sins would be forgiven. Now, in verse 30, we read about a law that's called, it's called the presumptuous sin. In my mind, it's, it's disrespectful sin. Disrespectfully. Verse 30, but a person who does anything presumptuously whether he is native born or stranger that one brings reproach on the Lord and he shall be cut off from among the people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment now when we read that that he brings reproach on the Lord and he despises the word of the Lord if we go back and look at that verse in Hebrews, it says, what did he do? What does that sin do that they were thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace. Well, it's the same thing. That's I believe that's what he's kind of relating it back to, the Old Testament the old law because that's what they were doing in the old law if they sinned you know presumptuously purposely that you're despising the word of God you are a reproach to the Lord same thing here you're walking on Jesus' sacrifice you're kicking the blood around you're making a mockery of it you're making fun of it that's the kind of sin that it's talking about there in Hebrews. Now let's let's look a little further, go a little deeper. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do these things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, weakness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to the parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who know in the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Well, Paul here is echoing the law concerning presumptuous sin. They should be cut off. They should die doing these types of sin that are a reproach to the Lord, that's disobedient to the Lord. It despises the Word of God. These things that Paul listed here are the same. They're detailed sins and detailed evil things that people will do that's in this category, I believe, of sinning willfully. Let's take it a step further. Let's look at uh, 
Galatians 5. Let's read about what Paul says about walking in the Spirit. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are the contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry. On and on it repeats most of the same things we read out of Romans. But Paul adds here at the end, and he said, And the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then, but fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He mentions the good things, the good things of God. Okay? Let's look at Romans 3. But Romans 3, verse 21, But now the righteousness of God apart from, our, from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. So when we read this in Hebrews, verse 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That doesn't mean that our sin that we do every day, that doesn't mean that it's unforgivable. It is forgivable. Because I'm telling you something, I sin all the time. I mean, I can sin driving down the interstate when somebody cuts me off. <laughs> I sin. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose my salvation because of that. But the Spirit of God that lives in me is the one that then hits me right on the head. Hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. Oops, sorry about that, God. Oh, okay. I, oh man, calm down, calm down. That, that's, that we do that all the time. That's, that's normal sin. I'm not saying that, I'm not condoning sin, and I'm not saying that you're allowed to sin as much as you want. You're not. Let me give you an analogy of uh, how, how this is, of what I think, and how I'm going to wrap this up. Let's look at uh, a lake. Let's say it's iced over. And the edge of the lake is pretty thick ice. But as you get out further in the middle of the lake or river, uh, the ice is thin. The ice gets thinner. And so I look at it like this. If you're living this walk of faith and you're trying to live life right, you're trying to be live righteously, do what's right, do what, you know, don't, don't be mean to people. You know, try to try to love your neighbor. Try to do what Christ has asked us to do. But maybe you, you're you're messing around with some of these heavy duty sins, adultery, sorcery, or sexual immorality. You're messing around with them. Well, you're walking on thin ice. So you're getting out further and further and further, and then crack. You fall slap through the ice. Well, physically, it's going to be a tough ordeal. I mean, you'll be lucky if you can get back on that ice. You'll be extremely lucky. You'll have to be a strong person because the more you fight to get back on that ice, it's going to break off until you finally reach a thick enough ice that you possibly can lift yourself out of that cold water before you die you know, of, uh, you know, before you drown and you, your body just gives out. Now, that's physically. Now, in a spiritual sense of, of walking by faith, living by faith, if you mess around with these things, you can get in trouble. Because if you, if you step in that ice, that thin ice, and hit that water spiritually, uh, it, 
if it may be tough to get out of there. Now this is where we get into demonic, you know, forces and unclean spirits. Because if you're messing with this stuff, adultery and sorcery and uh, contentions and hatred and envy, drunkenness, robberies, if you're really truly indulge, indulged in this a lot, I mean, you're opening the door for spiritual, unclean spirits to be able to enter in your life and work in your life. And you're not even really realizing it. So that's the danger of, of these types of sins. I believe, going back to uh, Hebrews, I believe this is that if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge, I believe that's part of it. And I believe that if you're not careful, you can sin in such a way that it's really, truly, it's despicable to God. You're insulting Him. You're insulting the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. That's the type of sin that it's talking about here. It's not talking about our everyday unintentional sin. Uh, it's important that we have the Spirit in us because if we recognize it, uh, then that's a good sign because that's the spirit that's living in us that's saying, hey, that's poking at us. Say, hey, 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 uh -uh, that ain't right. Oh, okay, oh, sorry about that, Lord. Hey. Ooh, and then you repent of it and you go on and you try to do better. That's the wall uh, of Christians. That's the challenge that we have as Christians. Uh, it's not easy necessarily being a Christian, but it's a heck of a lot better life than the other way around. I mean, I'd, I'd be honest with you, I'd hate to think that I was so deep in some of these sinful areas that Paul talks about here that I would just be immersed in it uh, to the point that I was actually sinning on purpose. I mean, that would be a bad place to be. I hope I never even get close to that. You know, God have grace and mercy uh, with my soul. And listen. Uh, this may have been uh, something that may have helped someone. Maybe it didn't help anybody. Uh, I hope it did. Uh, if you were confused a bit about that verse, just remember that sin that someone would purposely do to spite God, you know, to, tr to walk on, you know, to spit in his face, if you will. Okay? That's, those, are, those, are, uh, those are the sins it's talking about. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can go to my website, thefinalgate.com. Look at the top of the page. You'll see a link called Salvation. Click it. It'll give you some instructions on how you can accept Jesus and be a part of this kingdom and change your life forever. Thanks for watching. Finalgate.com.